Hi there, Rachel Sherman here, and in this video we're going to look at properties of relations and how to apply reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties, also learning about equivalence relations. With relations, no matter what they are, there's three primary properties that are significant to other aspects of discrete mathematics. The reflexive property states that a value is always related to itself. So if you have a case that's reflexive, every value in your domain must be related back to itself in the codomain. We would see this visually as x relates to x, just using shorthand here where r is some relation defined over a domain and a codomain. The symmetric property would imply that any time x relates to y, again, over some arbitrary domain and codomain, that also y must relate back to x. So if x relates to y, then y must relate back to x. And the transitive property states that if x relates to y and y relates to z, that x must relate directly to z. This is something that you may have seen in other aspects of your discrete mathematics course. If you run into a case where a relation has all three of these properties, that is a relation with a special name and we can call it an equivalence relation. So equivalence relations must have all three of these properties. Let's take a look at some examples. Define a relation R on the set of all real numbers as follows. For all real numbers x and y, x relates to y if and only if x is equal to y. Now, while these properties can be checked on finite sets, the same properties do apply and can be proven for infinite, infinite sets where, in certain cases, where they apply. To check these, we're going to go one at a time and conduct almost mini proofs to that. To check the reflexive property, you're looking to see when x relates to itself. So ask yourself, would it make sense for x to equal x? By definition, something is equal to itself, and being that this is the equivalence relation, not to be confused with the equivalence relation we were talking about before, but you're looking at when these two things are equal, therefore equivalence here. By definition, this is true. Then check your symmetry property. If x relates to y, does y also relate to x? For the same reason, when things are equal, it's okay to write it on either side. That's the same thing as saying y equals to x, which implies that y is related to x. Therefore, the symmetry property holds true. And repeat that for the transitive property. So we know, as part of the transitive property, we're checking when x relates to y and y relates to z. So more specifically, that means that x equals y and y equals z. So by substitution, x is equal to y, which is also equal to z, which is the same thing as saying x equals z. In other words, we've now shown that x is related directly to z. So the transitive property applies here as well. This is one of the simplest cases of an equivalence relation because it has all three of these properties. So furthermore, we can say that this is an equivalence relation. There can always be cases that may or may not have one or more of these properties. Let's take a look at the next example. So this time we're defining a relation over the set of all real numbers. 
but x is related to y if and only if x is less than y. So now we're using an inequality. Let's check. So if these are true, we have to be able to show, since it's an infinite domain, that these work for any arbitrary values. So to check the reflexive property, x would relate to itself if and only if x is less than x. Because it's strictly less than and not equal to, this is false. Therefore, this is not reflexive. Another way you could write this is that x is not related with a slash through your relation to itself. Then check for symmetry. If x relates to y, that implies that x is less than y. Now, because of the way inequalities work, that does not mean that y is less than x. There is no way for this to be true. So therefore, we can say that this is not symmetric. And lastly, you're going to go ahead and check the transitive property. So again, we know that x is related to y and y is related to z. Can we show that x is in fact related to z? So this means that x is less than y, y is less than z. You may recognize this from other parts of a discrete mathematics course. Specifically, this is the transitive property of inequalities right here. By substitution, once again, just like we did in the previous example, x is less than y, which is less than z, is the same thing as saying that x is less than z, which implies that x is related to z, and therefore this is transitive. Now, even though the question wasn't specifically asking for is this an equivalence relation, if you were looking for just determining if something's an equivalence relation, as soon as you've shown that something does not work, then you've verified that an equivalence relation does not exist. If you're trying to verify these properties, this is how you would go about it. You could even just provide a counterexample. So in the real number system, in this case, right, you could say, I don't know, let's say let x equal three. Is three less than three? It is not. So here's your counterexample. And then same thing for your symmetry property. So although you can't prove something by example, you have to use arbitrary values, you can give a counterexample to show why these are false. So for here and for here. So what if you say let x equal zero and y equal five? Zero is less than five, but five is not less than zero. So again, you've given counterexamples as to why this is not reflexive or symmetric. Let's take a moment and look at one more slightly more involved example for equivalence relations and these three properties. Define a relation on the set of all integers as follows. So we're changing our domain a little bit. We can say that m is related to n if and only if 3 divides their difference. So if you were doing this on a finite scale, it might be easier to use something like a digraph in order to visualize what was going on here. But you don't have the same benefit when you're dealing with an infinite domain. Let's check if the reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties hold here. Just like before, check the reflexive property. So let's say, what do we get? Is m related, through relation t, is m related to itself? Check, does 3 divide m minus m? Well, m minus m is 0. 3 does, in fact, divide 0. Therefore, this is reflexive. Then check for symmetric. If m is related to n, that implies that 3 divides m minus n. So in other words, m minus n is equal to 3 times, I'm just going to say some arbitrary integer value, let's say k. Well, if we went through here and, let's say, factored out a negative 1 on both sides, 
you would get n minus m equals 3 times negative k or negative 3 times k, and then of course you can rearrange that. So in other words, if negative k is an integer, this by definition means that 3 divides n minus m, and therefore n is related to m. So you've been able to prove that for this infinite set, this is in fact symmetric as well. And last but not least, let's go ahead and check if the transitive property holds true. M relates to N and type something else. N relates to, let's say, S. Can we show that M relates to S directly? So this means that 3 divides N minus N, 3 divides N minus S, and then you're going to go ahead here and rewrite these just like we did for symmetry. So in other words, m minus n is equal to some arbitrary integer 3 times that k, and also that n minus s is equal to 3 times some other arbitrary integer, let's call it, I don't know, l. So if you take these two equations and add them together, you get m minus n plus n minus s equals to 3k plus 3l. And at this point, you can probably see where this is headed. Our n's cancel, and we're left with m minus s equals 3 times k plus l, where by the closure property, the integer is under addition, this is some integer value, right? So in other words, 3 divides n minus s, which by definition means that m is related to that arbitrary value s directly. So once again, we've shown that this holds true with transitive property. And just like earlier, since this holds all three of those properties, we can say that t is an equivalence relation. In the next video, we'll take a look at equivalence classes. Thank you for watching.